Many FSU, Clemson, Miami, and North Carolina fans are pretty confused about what's going on with potentially adding Cal, Stanford, and SMU to the ACC. But there is truly a major Game of Thrones style game being played in the background. And we're going to break down the goals of each player, including Florida State, Clemson, Notre Dame, ESPN, the SEC, and the Big Ten, and explain why all of this may make more sense than you realize. Now, last night, an informal vote was held, and it seems like expansion or adding those teams is on hold right now. It's not going away anytime soon, though, and you're going to keep hearing about it. Sounds like 10 programs were in favor of adding more teams, and five were not. The five, according to Jason Shear, were Florida State, Clemson, UNC, UVA, and North Carolina State. Now, in all of our videos that we've done, we have mentioned a big four of Florida State, Clemson, UNC, and one other team. That team wasn't mentioned in the five programs who voted to not expand the ACC. Do you notice who that was? Yeah, it was Miami. They voted toward expanding the ACC. Uh, I think this probably signals a couple of things. The Hurricanes, number one, don't have a landing spot right now. As much as we want to say that Miami's brand is probably third in the ACC and how we like to give them a hard time, but we at least maybe need them to get out of the conference. It seems like they're not very confident that they could get out. Florida State and Clemson know that they could go. It seems like UNC and Virginia think that they could get out as well. Maybe North Carolina State to the Big 12. But Miami doesn't seem very confident that they could land anywhere. Now, Miami could certainly land in the Big 12. But that's not really an advantage at this point. And they're not ready for the Big 10 or the SEC. And so... Maybe Miami has kind of tucked their tail between their legs and isn't ready for the big time. I'm not sure, but I find it very interesting that they voted to add teams. The big player in all of this is Notre Dame. So let's talk about them first. Notre Dame's biggest goal through all of this is to remain independent in football. They love their independence there. They love the fact that they control what they do. They love the narrative and they love the money around it. But they also want to keep the ACC alive and competitive as kind of maybe a secondary goal. They don't want the ACC to break into pieces and then get collected by the SEC, the Big Ten, and the Big 12. The big reason why is because they want their other sports to have a home. And I don't think the Big Ten or the SEC is going to let Notre Dame join in the capacity that they currently are in the ACC. I think they're going to make them join as a full member, and Notre Dame wants to avoid that. Notre Dame has to join the ACC if they join any conference before 2036. Now, if the ACC was to collapse, Notre Dame would be stuck playing with the worst of the worst leftovers. That's Wake, Duke, Boston College, others, until 2036, or pay their exit fee to move over to the same type of scheduling agreement with the Big Ten until 2036. Uh, when we look at Florida State and Clemson, teams that have the potential to go to the Big Ten and the SEC and may announce prior to August 15th, 2023, we'll see, but their biggest goal is to get out of the ACC as soon as possible while also making the best long-term financial decision for the program, whether that be the SEC or the Big Ten. Um, they're trying to negotiate a deal to get as much as the full payout as they can from the new conference while also avoiding paying as much of a conference exit fee and a grant of rights penalty to the ACC as possible. The SEC and the Big Ten likely both want Florida State and Clemson to hold pat and wait a few years, but there is no way that that's in Florida State and Clemson's best interest financially. The SEC and the Big Ten appear to be willing to negotiate and accept these terms now due to the worth that Clemson and Florida State will bring them in the future. Now, when you get to the other teams like Miami, North Carolina, and Virginia, it gets a little bit more hairy. 
We're going to talk about that in just a moment, but I do want to show some love to our friends over at Garnet and Gold. Make sure that if you're an FSU fan, you are shopping nowhere but GarnetandGold.com. Season is just 24 days away. Shout out to Garnet and Gold. Dot com use code NOSLAW, N-O-S-L-A-W, to get 15% off your order. Appreciate them and their support. Okay, Miami, North Carolina, Virginia. Teams that may have the potential to go to the Big Ten and the SEC, but certainly have to wait a little bit longer. Well, their goals are kind of similar to Florida State and Clemson's, where they're trying to get out of the ACC as soon as possible, but also trying to make the best long-term financial decision for the program. They're also trying to negotiate the best possible deal to avoid paying much of that exit fee and the grant of rights penalty, just like Florida State and Clemson are. And the SEC and Big Ten probably want those teams, Miami, North Carolina, and Virginia, but they don't want them to come right now. There's no way that their worth is as much as Florida State and Clemson's, and Unlike Florida State and Clemson, where the SEC and Big Ten might be willing to cave on their hold pass status, I can't imagine that they would do that with North Carolina, Miami, Virginia, NC State, and others. I think that the situations are very similar in what both North Carolina, Miami, and Virginia, and others want compared to Florida State and Clemson. I just don't think the SEC and the Big Ten are willing to budge for them because they just don't bring enough value from a brand perspective. ESPN and SEC have some goals with all of this as well. They want to keep the most valuable teams in the ACC for as long as they possibly can. Uh, They want to keep the most valuable teams under the current contract of their company. Another goal is to do nothing and legally risk that grant of rights. Um, They certainly don't want to lose Florida State, Clemson, North Carolina, Virginia, teams like that to the Big Ten. And so ESPN and the SEC have a very vested interest in this as well. The Big Ten has some goals. The Big Ten wants to force Notre Dame into joining the conference. They want to add FSU, Clemson, North Carolina, Virginia to their conference for the most favorable amount, the lowest dollar amount that they can get them to agree to. And they want to buy some time to negotiate more additional team spots and focus on obtaining the four schools above, without losing them to the SEC. Again, Florida State, Clemson, North Carolina, and Virginia. So what's going on with Cal and Stanford and SMU? Well, it takes four teams to vote no to block adding these teams. That happened last night with the informal vote. Now, there's been a lot of questions about the grant of rights, and does it change or go away if the ACC adds these teams? Is it still enforceable? And it is. It is still enforceable. It does not go away once these teams are added. But the composition clause in the grant of rights does open the door to some minor negotiations, but nothing as severe as overturning the grant of rights or huge changes to distribution amounts. Both Notre Dame's and ESPN's goals align in regards to these teams. SMU is willing to go five to seven years with no payout uh, to join. Cal and Stanford are willing to go at 70% of a full payout. This extra revenue may incentivize other borderline power two worthy teams to stay longer because what they will be earning will be much better money over the next several years because of it. This helps Notre Dame's goal of keeping the ACC alive over the next several years and having it be competitive and not break into pieces completely and shatter. This ultimately helps ESPN's goal of keeping the most valuable teams in the ACC for as long as they possibly can under the new most valuable contract for their company. At the same time, adding Cal, Stanford, and SMU hurts FSU and Clemson's goal of being able to negotiate the best possible deal to get as much of a full payout as you can from the new conference and their goal of avoiding paying back so much of the exit fee and the grant of rights penalty to the Atlantic Coast Conference. Now, if you can block ESPN and Notre Dame's goals, you've increased your leverage as Florida State and Clemson in negotiations with ESPN. In short, ESPN gave FSU and Clemson 
a deal they desired, they would submit the paperwork to leave the ACC today. And Florida State and Clemson could no longer have a vote and block them. And those teams could easily be added. In addition to Florida State and Clemson, there appear to be some other borderline teams blocking Cal and Stanford and SMU for the same reasons that Florida State and Clemson are, to maintain leverage in negotiating with ESPN. Again, ESPN's goal is to keep the most valuable teams in the ACC for as long as they can, under the most valuable contract for their company. North Carolina, Virginia, and others want out but they're being wait, asked to wait until a future time because neither the Big Ten or the SEC wants them at this moment for entirely different reasons, which we talked about before. I wonder how confident folks like David Hale, Pete Thamel, and others are in predicting that nothing will change right now in the ACC because it seems like the ACC is in full-on panic mode. They're gnashing around trying to add SMU, Stanford, and Cal to save themselves. Those are three teams that are arguably of lower value than even Wake Forest is. That's about the most panic, save-yourself stuff that I've ever seen. Um, these guys are trying to jump off the Titanic in order to swim away in the ocean from this sinking ship. And we'll see if the narrative around the ACC having all of the power and all the leverage continues to be what the national media tells you it is. What's going to happen? Well, we're five days away from August 15th. And if an announcement is going to be made, it certainly will happen within the next week. And we'll see kind of how things shape up and where this conference sits in just a couple of days. If you want to stay updated with the very latest on conference realignment, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. And if you want to get caught up on our most recent conference realignment video, you can click right here to check it out.